This exercise is a 211 PC robbery. It's going to be a, uh, the scenario will be a 211 of the 711 store located at 12727 Southwestern Avenue. Uh, that uh, intersection, or it's located at an intersection of Rosecrans and Western. Uh, it's a, uh, a made up scenario and it's a mythical location. Uh, however, um, the location probably is in the city of Gardena, however you can use any city you wish. Uh, the store uh, faces north and it faces Rosecrans Avenue. On the east side of the store uh, is Western Avenue. Uh, there's a parking lot uh, to the front and to the east of the store. Um, the parking lot leads out uh, to Rosecrans Avenue. There's a traffic signal there at Rosecrans and Western. Inside the store, in the southwest corner of the store, is the uh, uh, desk, the clerk's desk, the counter, uh, customer counter. And uh, again, as I said earlier, the front door is uh, on the north side. You can't see from the sketch in front of you, but the east side of the store uh, would be where the coolers are, and that plays a role in the scenario, as I shall explain shortly. Your job is to take notes, view the videotape. Uh, what you're going to see uh, is, and here, uh, will be a dispatch of the uh, 211, uh, followed by arrival of police officers. Uh, there will be a short encounter with uh, the witness uh, who called in the uh, 211. Followed uh, by, following that will be a protective sweep uh, the store will be cleared of any suspects and we will encounter the victim. Uh, shortly you will see uh, the interview of that victim. The victim, by the way, has been shot in the left shoulder uh, and uh, he will have been treated by paramedics. Uh, during the course of the interview, of course, he will tell us a story about uh, seeing the suspect come in the store, uh, observing his activities, and then later uh, the crime itself. The victim uh, following treatment uh, will be transported uh, to RFK Hospital uh, emergency room uh, for treatment for his wounds. Uh, what, you're going to, what you're looking at now, again, is a sketch that we talked about, and uh, be prepared to uh, take notes. Uh, we will use the normal format uh, for the narrative. Uh, that will consist of the preliminary information, which will, be, which will document the dispatch. Following the preliminary information is the, is the initial observation, and in that section you'll document the first encounter with the witness uh, and also document the protective sweep. Following that will be the interview with the victim, the witness interview, and then the crime scene investigation. You will write a conclusion section. Uh, and the forms that you're going to use are the ones we used in the last scenario. Uh, the standard uh, police crime report form, suspect MO page, photo log, and property report form uh, to document your evidence that you're going to collect. That uh, is a summary of uh, the scenario that you're going to view and the project that you're going to write. Uh, stand by to take notes and prepare for the scenario. Uh, we will use uh, the date of the showing of this videotape as the date of occurrence. The time of the crime is going to be approximately uh, 1245 to 1 o'clock military time, 1245 to 1300 hours. All units stand by for a 211 broadcast. 9 Lincoln 3 Sam, 9 Lincoln 5 Sam, 9 Lincoln 1 Sam. A 211 just occurred at the 711, 12727 Western Avenue. Suspect was last seen northbound on Western Avenue driving a gray Camaro. Break. Stand by for further. Unit suspect is a WMA 20 to 25, blonde hair, wearing a yellow shirt and blue jeans. Break. Our units further, shots fired at that location, one victim down, paramedics en route. Break. A unit's possible license is 679 Lincoln. 9 Lincoln 3, handle the report. 9 Lincoln 3, Sam, 10 4, Hawthorne and Rosecrans.
I'm Officer Lewis. Uh, I'm investigating this robbery, and I understand that you're the person who called? Yes. Well, can you tell me what happened? Well, um, it was Monday at about 1 o'clock, and I went to 7-Eleven. I went in to go get a paper and maybe some coffee or water, and um, I pulled up, and as I walked up to the window, I saw the clerk, and there was a man holding him at gunpoint. Was this outside the store? Yeah, I was outside the store, and as soon as I saw that, I ran. Um, I didn't go to my car. I went behind a trash can. I was really scared. Officers have just arrived at the scene, and they've contacted uh, the witness who has informed them that uh, she heard a shot, and she, uh, prior to hearing the shot, she looked through uh, the window at the 7-Eleven store, saw a man hold a gun, holding a gun on the, uh, the clerk. She ran for cover, heard a shot, and saw a man running out the door, as you uh, will hear in her statement. Um, what we need to do now, because we don't know what the conditions are inside the store. We don't know if a suspect is still inside. We don't know the condition of the victim, so we have to perform what is called a protective sweep. The protective sweep uh, is performed with a tactical entry, weapons out, uh, at least two officers involved in the sweep. One of them will be you. Uh, as you enter the store, uh, you're going to survey the interior of the store. You're going to see uh, no people visible, at, uh, at least initially. Uh, when you sweep the store and the aisles for a possible suspect, uh, also include a, sw uh, a sweep of any uh, adjoining uh, offices or rooms, you're going to find uh, the, the store uh, empty, suspects are gone. Uh, you will then uh, go to the victim who you will encounter in front of the counter. Um, the victim uh, is on the floor. Uh, he has been uh, apparently wounded with a possible gunshot to the left shoulder. Uh, you can see an entry and exit wound. There's blood on the shoulder. Uh, and the victim is now consci conscious. Uh, you may allow uh, paramedics to come in and uh, begin treating that victim while you conduct your interview. Uh, the store is clear, protective sweep is completed, and the victim interview can be, uh, develop shortly. Hi, how are you doing? Are you okay? I'm, I'm okay. Okay, I, I responded to the call of a robbery. Uh, my partners and I have searched and cleared the area. Uh, nobody's here, and uh, paramedics are almost here. Uh, I need to ask you some questions and get you some medical treatment, okay? Okay. Just sir. hang on. Hi, sir. We're here to help you out, okay? Okay. We're just going to go and take a look at this and bandage you up, get you off to the hospital, okay? Hey, let me name? know when I can start uh, talking to him, guys. My name's Chris. What's your last name, Chris? Sanderson. And what year were you born? 1981. Looks like we got a gunshot through and through, left arm. Are you allergic to any medications? No, sir. Open that for me. Thank you. Hey, let me ask him a couple of questions, guys, while you're working on them. Not a problem. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Chris, tell me what happened. Well, uh, a few minutes ago, I was just working behind the counter and Two guys came in. Um, the one person he bought cigarettes, and then the second guy he was just hanging out at the back near the cooler mm -hmm. where the beer is kept. And uh, after the the first guy he bought his cigarettes and left, um, the second guy uh, he, he grabbed a beer, he opened it, then started walking towards the counter. Um, I was going to uh, confront him about the open container, and. Uh, he just came up to the counter, and as he approached me, he pulled a gun from the, the back of his waist and demanded all the money and told me not to hit the alarm or he'd shoot me. Okay. When he approached the, uh, the counter and you said he pulled a gun out, do you recall which hand the gun was being held in? Uh, the gun was in his right hand. His right hand? Are you sure of that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, does the store have a video surveillance camera system? Yes, it does. Uh, when the manager arrives, I'd like you to copy of the, of the tape. And finally, uh, anything else to add uh, to what we've already discussed? Uh, 
You know what? Thinking about it, he had a, a gold hoop earring in his ear. Do you know which year it was? Uh, it's his right ear. And then what happened? Um, I opened the register, I gave him all the money I'd got, which I guess was about $200. And uh, g gave the money to him, he, he walked towards the door. Um, uh, and as he was walking towards the door, I came out from the back of the counter uh, just to see if I could get a look as he left to see which car he was getting into. But just as I got around the back of the counter, he turned, looked over his shoulder and saw I was coming at him. He just turned and fired a shot at me. Okay. And uh, that's all I remember. Did you ever see uh, him get into a car? No. Uh, have you ever seen this guy before? I've never seen him before. All right. Uh, what do you remember about the gun? Uh, it was dark in color. That's all I really remember about the gun. Okay. Uh, I'm carrying a, a semi-auto, a 9mm. Uh, did it resemble mine? Did it, uh, how did it look? Uh, it looked a bit bigger than, than yours. Okay. But it, it was pretty much the same shape. And okay. It was dark in color. Have you ever seen a 45 auto before? Semi-auto? No. Okay. Uh, what did he look like? Uh, he was white. He was um, looked about 25 years old, maybe, mid-20s. Uh, he had long blonde hair. Okay. He was wearing a yellow shirt, maybe with a, a pocket on the breast. Okay. Uh, blue jeans, and he had on red running shoes. Have you ever seen him before? No. Okay. Uh, could you identify him again if you were to see him? Definitely. Uh, did he have any uh, facial hair, jewelry, anything like that? No. Okay. Uh, what were the exact words he said to you uh, when he came to the counter? Uh, he pulled the gun on me. He said, uh, just give me all the money, don't hit the alarm. Okay. Um, was there anybody else in the store at the time? No, no one else was there all at right. the time. Uh, and you can't identify him again? Yeah. Um, you said $200? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, you didn't see a car. Where was he standing when he turned and fired? Uh, he was close to the door. Um, I came out from the back of the counter, and he was almost at the door. He just he looked over his um, shoulder, turned and fired. Okay. About what time was this? Uh, about one o'clock, I think. Oh, that's good. Okay. Now there's still, there's a beer sitting on the counter. That's the one he left. That's the one he left. Okay. Uh, listen, these paramedics are going to finish working on you, and uh, you're going to be taken to uh, a trauma center, emergency room, and uh, uh, we're going to need to contact you again. So. Um, uh, you know, let us have all the information that we can get. We, we may contact you at the hospital to get the rest of the information. Your name is? Uh, Chris Sanderson. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Okay. All right. Let's get you off to the hospital here. Help What happened after you ran behind the trash can? I ran behind the trash can, and then a couple seconds later, I heard a gunshot. All right. And a white male ran out of the 7-Eleven, blonde hair, real bushy blonde hair, wearing a yellow shirt and blue jeans and red shoes, um, and jumped into a primer gray Camaro and pulled out of the out of the parking lot quickly, kind of leaving a skid mark, and uh, pulled out onto Rosecrans and went north on Western. Did you happen to get a license? 679L. That's was that a I saw. It was California the plate? Part. Yes. Okay. Uh, was he? Uh, was anybody with him? No, I didn't see anyone. All right. Um, was he carrying anything when he ran out of the store? He was. In his left hand, he had a bag, and in his right hand, he had his gun. It looked right. like a semi-automatic, I think. Did you? Did he see you? No, he didn't. Okay. I tried to stay out of sight. And as right. soon as I saw him leave, I ran up to the front of the store and I looked in and I saw the clerk laying on the floor. It looked like some blood on his arm. And so I just ran to the payphone. I didn't want to go inside. I didn't know if anybody else was in So you there. haven't been inside the store? N no. Okay. And paramedics are now working on the clerk. Uh, and in fact, we just finished talking with him. So he's going he's gonna to be okay. He's on his way to uh, okay. the hospital. Okay. Uh, have you ever seen this guy before? The 7-Eleven worker? No, the, uh, the person who no, uh, ran out the door. Never. The guy with a gun. Uh, can you describe the gun for me? It was black, dark colored, and uh, semi-automatic. Okay, was you know what a semi-auto is? Yes, I do. Could you tell uh, what the caliber was? No, I couldn't. Okay. Um, 
Now, so, as you described, you heard a gunshot? Was it only one gunshot? Only one gunshot, yes. And right. then the man ran out of the store. Okay. Can you, what was the, de the delay in time, do you think, from the time you heard the gunshot uh, until you saw the guy running out the door? Maybe about five, ten seconds. And did he see you when you were looking through the window? Not that I know of. I think if he would have seen me, he would have come after me. That's why I ran and got right. behind the trash can. And do you think you can identify him again? Definitely. Uh, did he have any facial hair? Um, I didn't see any because he had so much blonde hair. Any uh, jewelry or anything else that you could see? No. Okay. Um, any distinguishing features in the car? Primer gray, older Camaro, maybe 1970s. Okay. And could you recognize it if you were to see it again? Yes. All right. Uh, is there anything else you can add to the... Uh, to what you've already told us? No, I just hope the clerk's okay. Okay, I think he's going to be okay. Thank okay, you. Good. We're going to begin the crime scene investigation, and what you're looking at now is an overall shot of the major part of the crime scene. Uh, this, is, uh, this area is located in the southwest corner of the uh, uh, interior of the 7-Eleven store. Uh, this is the clerk's counter. Uh, it has a uh, L shape to it. Uh, the part in the foreground, or the closest to you, uh, is the counter uh, where the suspect and the victim uh, had an encounter. And what you're looking at now is a beer bottle that uh, was a, reportedly left by the suspect. Uh, some loose currency. Uh, there's a, uh, a bill on the counter and a couple on the floor. Uh, just to the east, of that area is a pool of blood. Uh, this is from the victim where the victim had fallen uh, with his wound. Uh, the bottom part of the L that, that is closest to the south part of the wall uh, is the other part of the counter. Uh, this room is 40 feet by 40 feet overall. Out of camera view uh, to the east end of the room uh, is the cooler area. Uh, where the uh, suspect obtained the beer, and in between are the various aisles containing uh, the products uh, that the store sold. Against the uh, south wall is a bullet hole with a bullet lodged in it. Now we're going to look at each item of evidence specifically. I do have some additional comments for the items of evidence as we get to it. So please note the scene. Uh, you will be drawing a drop wall sketch uh, of this room uh, and of this crime scene. This is a pool of blood that we saw earlier. Um, the specific location for purposes of your sketch is nine feet north of the south wall, nine feet four inches east of the west wall. You'll want a photograph of that blood stain because it marks the location where the victim fell. What we're looking at now is the south wall. Uh, there's what appears to be a bullet hole in the south wall, and inside the bullet hole is a, an apparent bullet fragment. Uh, when we measure this for purposes of the sketch and fixing the item of evidence, uh, the bullet is six feet, three inches east of the west wall, five feet, four inches up from the floor. Uh, we're going to remove that bullet uh, from the wall and collect it as evidence. You're going to want a photograph of the bullet hole and include that photograph on your photo log. Uh, the bullet, of course, is going to go on your, in your property report uh, as an item of evidence. This is a uh, shot of the uh, beer bottle uh, located on the corner of the counter uh, that the suspect apparently uh, put there. Uh, in this close-up shot, I want you to notice that we have already dusted, by the way, for fingerprints, and we've located uh, a fingerprint on the label there as you see it, and uh, we will lift that fingerprint. We're now looking at two fingerprints that we've located after dusting for fingerprints on this counter. Uh, you will uh, take a photograph of them and uh, lift them. Those two fingerprints will be uh, on, put on lift cards and then listed on your property report form as items of evidence. 
What we're looking at now is the door that leads into the parking lot. It is uh, the north door on the north side of the store. On the floor in front of that door is an expended shell casing. It's a 45 caliber uh, shell. Uh, this is the door where the victim said the suspect was standing uh, when he turned and fired at the victim hitting him. Uh, in this tighter shot, a closer shot, uh, I want to give you the measurements for this bullet shell for purposes of your sketch. Uh, the bullet shell is six inches south of the north wall and 15 feet six inches east of the west wall. Uh, we will collect that uh, bullet shell and include it uh, on our evidence list that goes on the property report form. Uh, make sure you get uh, a photograph of the bullet shell before you collect it. Uh, the photograph will go on your, pro on your photo log. Just to review the evidence that you're going to uh, collect uh, now that we've finished processing the crime scene, um, you're going to uh, collect the fingerprints that we located uh, first on the bottle, uh, then on the counter, uh, the two fingerprints that we located there. Uh, we are going to, I would collect the currency, the loose cu currency also, um, uh, since it is part of that crime scene. Uh, we're going to collect the bullet fragment removed from the south wall. Oh, incidentally, make sure we collect the beer bottle, not only the prints, but the beer bottle itself. Uh, we are going to collect the bullet shell located on the floor inside of the north door. Uh, in terms of photographs, you want an overall photograph of the southwest corner of the room uh, with close-ups of the beer bottle, the latent fingerprints, and the uh, bullet fragment uh, in the bullet hole. Also take a close-up of the pool of blood uh, that's located on the floor. Take a close-up, I'm sorry, an overall shot of the north door with a bullet, show, a bullet casing in front of that door and then collect the bullet casing. To summarize your exercise and this project, um, you have observed the crime scene, we processed the crime scene, you have two statements, one from the victim and one from the reporting party, uh, also uh, the, the witness. Uh, in your conclusion section, I want you to answer the question, the questions, how was this crime committed, by whom, and when. Um, complete your narrative uh, using the, the uh, headings that we've discussed in class and the forms that uh, uh, you have been provided. Now, if you're going to use the uh, forms on the website, don't forget to pull those forms. They're all available on the website or they're available uh, from the instructor.